If this is your first visit to the Low Light Photo Group, let me give you a brief intro about what the group does and whatnot and stuff like that. This was started in 2017 by me, Donovan, aka Dono Evans or Photo Dono. Basically, the group explores the genre of low light photography, which is creating images with a small amount of light, which could be astrophotography, light painting, long exposures with neutral density filters, and star trails, pretty much you can name it all that stuff. Basically, the group's intent is to share this knowledge and experience in creating low-light images through a presentation like today and through other various workshops throughout the year. The group is mainly run by me, Photo Donald, along with a generous support from Johnson Photo Imaging. Other support comes from members who volunteer their time and donations. I am also the Director of Education at Johnson Photo Imaging. channel. One of the things that I love to do is I love to shoot pictures of the night sky. It's one of my more favorite things to do in the whole entire world. I, I can't think of anything more pleasing, more exciting to do than something like that. For those who haven't met me before, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is, of course, Donovan Evans. I've been also been called Photo Down. That's why you see Photo Down kind of label almost everywhere here. Uh, I've been currently obsessed with the Milky Way educator for over for close to 30 years now. So I've been teaching photography for quite some time. If you want to, if you like, please click and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I often post there uh, my work and photo tips. You can find me most on social media as Photo Dono. If you can, print sales and also gratuities do help me pay the bills and put food on the table. Remember, I have a family to feed and I would rather have them eat something other than meat tonight. The group, if you want to, you can follow the group on social media, on, at Facebook, and also on Meetup. Use the search field to type the full name of the group and you'll see the group's banner on either site. There's no feed, of course, to join the group. I post all the low light photo group events via Meetup and announce them on the group Facebook page. I also moderate another group on Meetup called the Brains and Photo Group. Check it out. I post all the classes I moderate and teach plus various field trips throughout the year. So try to keep make sure you're uh, you're muted at this particular point, and then we'll go on from there. Hey, I got the year right, so that's a good start. All right, and here in this in this in this class. But if you want to, you can always if you do happen to be in Florida, you can always stop on by, check it out, and you can always find us uh, here down here. We're like one of the few camera stores here in the state of Florida. There's basically about about a half a dozen uh, camera stores here in Florida. It's a fairly large state. It takes you about eight hours to drive, almost. Uh, from where I am to the south board, uh, the southern part of the state, and another eight hours to drive up to the most northern start part of the state. So it takes you about a, a free, but only takes you about four hours to really drive across it. Go figure, at least on this portion of it anyway. But you can always check us out there. Uh, one of the cool things uh, we do, I get to do, do is play with some really cool gear sometimes. Uh, this is something that with the store just got in that I thought some of the low light members would enjoy just looking at. Uh, it's from Fotex. It's the uh, the M200 here. Uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, we used it in a class the other night. Um, it's basically a nice little small mini LA. Oh, actually, I've got one right here. It's one I'm using to light up the, for me right here. You know, so it really works out really well. It's really nice and small, compact. You can see it changes lights and stuff like that. And uh, it's only 139 for these things. It's pretty cool. You can change the colors, move it around. Comes with a little stand. You know, it's really, really, it, I, I find this thing dead useful. I can, I've used one myself quite a bit when I'm out in the field. Uh, you can even use it as a pass-through charger if you're in a pinch, if you got a device that needs to be charged up. So again, it works out really well. It's a multiple, you know, it's an RGB. So you go through a variety of different colors. They also got special effects. Uh, so yeah, it's really, really cool. I like it a lot. Again, the price is nice. It works out really well. And we have them available here at the store in a significant quantity. So, yeah. So if you happen to be happen to, to the store, you want to check them out, be more than glad to showcase them to you if you want to do that. 
Another thing too I've been doing lately here in some of these things, I've been talking about uh, other photographers that I've seen or or, uh, or I've uh, been researching or just or re re rediscovering as I go through them all. Um, so there's a photographer that I ran uh, that I discovered uh, that I didn't really know about until uh, I, I watched that YouTube. I was watching the YouTube channel of that the, the art of photography with a. Uh, uh, Oh, what's his name? Ted. I forget. I forget his last name now. But if you ever uh, Google the YouTube uh, channel for for the art of photography, he was talking about this uh, photographer Arthur Meyerson. It's been around for fifty years. I've seen his work, but I never really put the name associated with some of his work. And uh, I was really I used to I have seen his work before, but I never really put the two and two the name and him together before. And when he was talking about him, and I was looking at some of his stuff, and it was just really his work was really moving. And uh, when I started digging more and more into his stuff, and I was like, wow, this is some really cool stuff. Uh, as this, you know, this is part of his wiki bio right here. He's uh, basically considered like one of the, uh, the one of the better color photographers uh, living right now. He's still a living, producing, working photographer. He primarily works out of, uh, from what I could tell, out in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He's part of the uh, board of art directors out there. And uh, he was also... Um, uh, part of Nikon's uh, illustrious legend of behind the lens series. So yeah, so he's got some, uh, he's got some marks. He's in several permanent museum collections. So yeah, interesting character to say the least. And his artwork is uh, top notch. If you, if I don't say so, the one I really like is the one where it's called the, um, uh, the one that'll be kind of the water wall in Tokyo. It's an amazing piece of work. I love the color in there. It does. It's such a uh, an amazing, vibrant piece, considering the fact that he happened to be just in a station in some place in Tokyo, and shooting this little waterfall through this whole entire thing. It just, it's, you know, I the fact that he's able to, with the with you know with being able to take advantage of the light in the area that you're in and doing all this stuff, it is really, really, really cool. I am, I'm just blown away from this work. Now, again, I just did a little quick little screen capture of this guy's stuff, but if you get a chance to check him out, I would certainly do so. I'm sure, I, you know, and I've seen only a couple of his pieces actually uh, in the, in the photo books and some of the bookstores and the, the books are much more vibrant than what you can see here. And uh, it's well worth it. I, I would uh, definitely check out the works if you can. Uh, a couple of things that's coming up uh, that I'll be posting up shortly. I did post this up on the Bradenton uh, photo group uh, page. I'm doing the Venice Fishing Pier again over there on February 11th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, it's rain or shine, of course, depending on the weather, of course. There's no fee. Of course, tips are appreciated, of course. So if you happen to be in Venice, I'll be, t I'll be leading a little field trip over there. This is on a Saturday. Trying to beat the sunset to get down there to uh, photograph the, uh, the uh, sun. Uh, setting between the uh, Venice Fishing Pier. This will be like the Venice Stonehenge, as it were. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a basic editing and composition class with an emphasis on Milky Way and astrophotography. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, I'll be also hitting some highlights dealing with Lightroom, Luminar Neo, Capture 122, plus a few other things as well, too. So if anybody's interested in doing that, there's a fee for that one. And it'll, it'll be in the store for this one particular one. Uh, another thing that we'll be doing too, is if anybody's interested in, I'll be doing a downtown photo walk, or it's also been known as the photo pub crawl, which is downtown Bradenton from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So again, if anybody's interested in that, that's going to be on February 18th as well. So yeah, remember, uh, you can bring anything, you can bring any gear you want, but we only suggest that you bring one camera and one lens. Uh, cause if you do uh, decide to partake of some of the libations along the way, you're, you're responsible for your own gear. <laughs> so just letting you know, <laughs> all right. I think I got all that. I think all the important stuff out of the way there. Any questions about any of that before I start digging into some of the other stuff? No, I seem to chat. Let me pull that up in here. Hang on one second. Ted Forbes, thank you so much. All right. I appreciate that.
Yeah, respond. Yeah, exactly. Responsible for your own gear. How far from Northport? Uh, what the story is? Uh, it's up in Bradington. Is where it is. Uh, about uh, what forty-ish minutes, if I say, if we go from the interstate, I think something like that. All right. Get back in that. Now I'm bringing this back up because I want to talk a little bit about this stuff because. One of the things I'm always running into quite a bit with some of the people around here is that um, one of the things that I, people always get, especially when they talk about a sunset, especially here in Florida or sunrises, depending on your on your wake up call, is that when you're dealing with stuff like this is trying to figure out when the hell are you going to be able to see this stuff. So what happens is, is I use a program called PhotoPills. That's an app you can download from your phone. I've talked about it extensively. Some of you already probably know about this thing. If you don't, there's an app that you can download. It's called PhotoPills. Uh, if you want to, you can probably Google it and find out more and more about it. Uh, I'm not going to really go into any significant detail other than it has a thing that's called a planner in there. So when I'm talking about photographing like events like this or the Milky Way or things like that, this is my go-to tool for that. There are other planners out there, and there's some that are free on websites like timeanddate.com, places like that where you can kind of use these as research tools and stuff like that. But the thing that's really cool about this is you can use it kind of like a timeline to kind of see what's going to go on. So if you look at the orange line that's right there, the one that's moving, the really thin one, that's the sun moving through the sky. That big, thick orange one is where it's going to be setting. So right now, I'm kind of backing up and going from the 8th all the way up to the 11th and trying to see where the sun's going to line up with the Venice Fishing Pier. So it looks like basically around the 9th is probably going to be about my, or around the 10th, right around there, my best time. However, I'm going to be at work when the sun's setting. So I'm not going to be able to make it until basically on the 11th because that's the only time frame I got to get down there. So what does that mean? Well, that means I got to hope that I'm going to have a window of opportunity on the 11th. The good news is I can kind of zoom up and kind of double check my position there. And hopefully I can get into a little bit slightly better position and do it down there for that. Now, this only happens about twice a year, basically in October and February. So if I'm going to miss it here in February, I'm going to have to try again in October if I want to do it. If you're not familiar with uh, with with this type of stuff, it's really not that hard to, to find out these things. There's plenty of uh, uh, websites out there that like to talk about these things. You might have heard of like the New York Stonehenge or other places where the sun lines up along other things. This happens basically a couple of times, you know, where the uh, sun kind of or the moon or whatever astro body lines up. You know, this is something that people have known for literally thousands and thousands of years is how they kind of map the sky and go for it. So to kind of give you an idea, sometimes things don't work out. So weather-wise, well, you can see in this particular one, in the weather, there's not there's, uh, there's a lot of clouds in there. So the sun is there, but it's behind the clouds. It's not very sexy. So what I ended up having to do is I threw a neutral density filter on there because I, I didn't know what else. I'm out there. I kept hoping some of the clouds would go away, no matter how hard I blew at the sky. So I threw a 10-stop neutral density filter, right? Sorry, an eight-stop neutral density filter on there. And um, so I I so I was able to dig out eight seconds. So I got a nice smooth uh, glass uh, uh, water off of there. So it makes it a little bit more, at least hopefully a little bit more interesting photo because of that. Here, right here, what I did what I ended up doing, this is the same, same everything, but all I did was I just basically went from 75 millimeters on here to uh 25 millimeters in here now if you note right here too the other thing too which you, you should note too is that i'm shooting with an olympus system which has a micro four third sensor so my focal length may not match up with yours too so if you're shooting in full frame or crop sensor you'll have to do some config a little bit the different math on there so if you're shooting full frame it's easy times it by two if you're shooting with a crop sensor, well, it's not two, you just times it by one and a half and you get fairly close to it. And that's basically the same thing right there. Hang on one second. My little. Oh, thank you very much. What's that called? Yeah, PhotoPills. Thanks, Peter. Yep, yep, yep. PhotoPills Learning. Yeah, there's lots of apps out there. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, there's 
lots of apps out there. PhotoPills has a tremendous amount of of learning tools out there. In fact, they, they do lots of workshops throughout the year where they, they can take you all out there to go out and shoot. They like going to Iceland a lot. Iceland's supposed to be very beautiful. One day they'll take me out there, I hope. If you're shooting at 1600 on your ISO, aren't you getting a lot of grain? No, not really, because this is basically a stacked image. This is focus stacked on the whole entire thing. So what I did was I shot this one right here and, uh, and I focus stacked it, and I uh, when I when I when it all got put together, it just mapped out the green, no biggie. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, so uh, when I when I shoot the, when I when this particular picture was shot, it was a little bit darker than what you saw right here, but not too much. But any, but when I shot the whole thing, I uh, I had because I had to shoot this thing with the shell and focus, then I shot mid range, a couple of pictures in focus spots mid-range and I shot a little bit further out of course infinity in focus and then I just basically threw it in, in uh, photoshop to do the focus stacking I do some cleanup here and there but not too much terribly there I did a little tweaking with the sky to give a lot more like a gradient for the whole thing just to make it a little more pop to the whole thing but this was on the day where there was no sun to see so that type of thing uh, but I was saying, hey, so I'm shooting with Olympus on this particular, so it's micro four thirds on this particular stuff. Nothing too exciting as far as that goes. Just remember, if you see what I'm posting on here, it's talking about that. Now, the next day when I went out, I got a little bit lucky, but the uh, luckier, but the uh, you can see right where the sun's about to, uh, when it's starting to peak down below, but right right where that sun's hitting right there is where the uh, the clouds started to kiss down there. So that was about it and that's always going to hit but i got some nice little um detail in there that i was able to recover later on and this was again shot with the olympus this was about a thousand on the iso for this particular one, 400 this was again about 75 millimeters again 150 for um uh for full frame and i forget what the math would be on for crop sensors but you know it's fairly uh, it's fairly decent for the for overall for that it's not too bad, but this is a slightly cropped version, but I'll show you the original one here in a few moments. And this one is a shot, this was at 300 millimeters on my lens. So this would be about uh, uh, 600 millimeters on everybody else's. So this is pushing the kind of the limit right here, what I can get out of that particular environment where I was at. And you can see right there, the sun is pretty much pushed. You can see where the clouds are really gonna be there. It's gonna be gone in just a minute. This is all happening. In, very, very quickly. So I really got to make some split second decisions. I don't have a lot of time to make these things. So the sun is setting and next thing you know, it's, it's pretty much gone at that particular point. So we're just trying to make the best of what I can get right in front of me, kind of like what Arthur Myerson was saying, you got to work with what you got and, and figure out what you got to do from there. So, and now in October, and then I got there in October. Again, I had to work around my work schedule to get the shot. So I shot this one with the uh, with my newer camera, with the 40 to 150. And I shot this one 200 ISO. And uh, the image was a little bit darker than when I had in the, in the by when I edited it, it came out a little bit. It came out OK, but you can see the sun's a little bit over here to the left. But it's, it came out still pretty good. I was still pretty happy with it. But the problem is I needed to be over there and I was all, I needed to go out there a few days earlier if I wanted to get a little bit more of an in there. But unfortunately the day that I got out there was just a little bit on the late side, but that was about as good as I was gonna get in that particular one. So let's take a look a little bit before and after because everyone always asks me is, uh, is like, is this how it looks when you're out there? And the answer is, well, depends on who you talk to. Is this, this is what the camera saw. This is what I saw. Which one's true? I don't know. You tell me. I personally don't believe that either one is actually true because you, what we see and what we believe it to be true is completely different, you know, because, you know, that there's no such thing as a complete uh, absolute when it comes to photography or anything like this type of stuff. So, you know, I see lots of red, see lots of this going on, going in there. I still see all this stuff. All I'm doing is just bringing out the, the picture I saw in my head when I'm looking at the picture. Same thing with this one right here. I'm, all I'm doing is 
I'm not doing too much to it, just basically accentuating some of the, the contrast and some of the saturation in this particular one, and maybe accentuating some of the sharpness in there. And this one was probably the one that was a little bit more changed to it than before. I ended up cropping this one pretty dramatically more so than the other ones. The reason being because where I had to sit, I was actually in a group of almost 20 people when this particular shot. And if you've been under the Venice Pier with 20 people, it's not as easy to get a to get the right spot for the what you wanted to do. But one of the things I liked about that, I was at F22, which is what I wanted to get for that little bit of flair. I shot it at 200. The, and if you're not familiar with that, where you get that little bit of flair, if you shoot at F22 or F16 or higher F stops and you got nice little pinpoints of light, that's what that's coming from the aperture. You get these little star flare, flares or starburst effects. It's kind of a fun little effect that you can achieve. And so I'm shooting in this in a, almost a fairly dark tone. But I know that if I'm not blowing, oh, I'm not underexposing the picture to the point where I can't bring it back. And by, over, by basically lightening up, I'm not losing any tones in the shadow details. Yeah, I might be slightly overexposing right in that area, but that's the sun, you know, that's fine. I can... I can live with that. I would just wish he was over here a little bit more. I mean, in theory, in Photoshop, I could fix almost anything, but that's all right. I can live with that particular thing. There are really like two kinds of photography. Well, I say in the state of Florida, there's two types of photographers. There's photographers uh, who, shoot, who shoot bird photos and there's everybody else. But... Uh, but really, uh, the but the other the other there's another thing of photographers. There there are, are photographers who look at the look at the world and then they go in and they process the photos, and then there are other photographers who look at the world and they say, "I'm done with that," you know, like uh, Clyde Butcher or Henry Cartier Bresson. You know, those guys would look at the world and pretty much say, "This is how this is it. I'm done." You know, I, I don't really need to do too much more to my work. I, this is how I saw it. This is what is it. I had that decisive moment. I'm done. I don't really need to do more with that. And I think uh, Arthur Meyerson's kind of in that same boat as well, too. But you get people like this, where you get like uh, uh, Ansel Adams. You know, one of his things was like, you know, he, he was looking at uh, the diving board uh, there at Yosemite and uh, one of the things, one of the famous stories is that he was out there when he was looking at this thing and it was like, supposedly it was the last day of his trip. He had one plate left, you know, that last shot of the day. And he's going out there and he's like, and he's looking at it and it, it was not the way the subject appeared in reality, but how it felt to me and how it must appear in the finished print. Uh, and for me, I liked that statement more often than not. I, when I'm looking at what I see out there, I'm looking for what I'm looking for in the final quality, the final print, the final say of how it felt to me when I'm looking at it. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to go on there and composite the crap out of it. I'm just saying I'm going to go out there and just want to see what I, I think when I'm taking landscapes. I want to do stuff that I think what I, I, I would like to see what I feel when I see it. Because for me, landscapes are probably the, the hardest things to take pictures of. They're easy to take a picture of, but they're the hardest ones to get right. Because you can look at, if you look at Clyde Butcher's stuff or, you know, um, or Ansel Adams stuff, you know, they have this, this sensibility about their work that's amazing. You, you look at their work and you're in awe, not just not only of the subject matter, but the fact that they're, the, the amount of power and majesty or the sense of wonder that they are able to capture in that stuff. It's just amazing what they can uh, recover and, and bring forth. And uh, to me, I'm always humbled by what I see with that. And, and that's the key thing when I look for the landscapes is I look for that, that part of that I can hopefully bring that kind of humbleness to, to them all when I'm looking at that stuff. You know, so when you're looking to do edits and stuff like that, and you're trying to expound upon your work and stuff like that, you got to look for some of those types of things that kind of make or break your type of work, you know, so, and you got to think of things that, you know, outside the box sometimes, you know, sometimes you got to break a few omelets to make it kind of work for you. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, great. 
All right. Any questions about any of that stuff at all? Nope. Mm. All righty. All right. So everybody up for a photo review? All right. Let's see what you got, buddy. All right. Let's bring it on. All right. Let's see who's got what. Okay, Lisa, you're up first. Aren't you excited? You were up first last time. That's okay. It's been a couple of months. Everyone's forgotten by that. Hi. Yeah. You ready? Okay. I love this one. I think this, <laughs> uh, of course, you know, I was out there. So, you know, it was cold and it was chilly, but I think you got your position. I think you got one of the, you know, that, that was certainly one of the, the right positions right there. You got it right smack dab in the middle there. It almost looks like it's being held like a, like a crystal ball is being held right there on a, on this pedestal there. That's pretty cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I was, I was. It was really hard because of the. Um, first of all, it's moving pretty fast. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, the sun was rising quickly, and uh, to try to get the exposure, you know, with with uh, such a huge contrast you know it's yeah. a little challenging so, but i tried to kind of make it a, almost like a a dreamy feel you know as opposed to trying to because it was somewhat blown out so yeah yeah i saw because i saw you were using the 200 to 600 but you but you kept it down about three because 600 have been i think it'll have been way too well the 600 did you do shoot did you shoot any at 600 or you just kept it no, all no. most that was that was the main um yeah. Did, did you just for fun? Did you blow any of them up to about six hundred ish? Did you just to see? Because uh, no. <laughs> for me, it's all about those little heat waves in there. Because it gets like really abstract when you start looking at that stuff. Yeah, I liked the one you did. You know, I I like the way you did that. No, cool, thanks. That you posted on the website. Yeah, that, I I stuck mine. I, well, like usual, I stick mine at the end. So, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, I, I like that. And I look like how like you got the uh, the tonal range. Now, did you do any uh, any extra edits on the tonal ranges at all, or did you just kind of uh, just let them normal? Fly? Um, I think I did just mainly Lightroom, and um, I think I I tried a, several different things, you know, in uh, Photoshop and um, Luminar, but I think I ended up just going with this kind of simple edits in Lightroom. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try uh, with your next two photos, and, and I know I, I probably should have asked you before we started, but I was running out of time. So, with your next two photos, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try have everyone answer, uh, do like a little pop quiz, if that's okay with your group. <laughs> sure. Because yeah, you know, uh, I when I saw your next two photos, I was like, oh, that's cool, and I'm like, wait, I should I should let everyone play along. So, okay. <laughs> so don't don't answer yet right away. Okay. Okay, but. Yeah, but before we go on to that, so one of the things that's really hard to do, at least for me, when, you, when you're shooting sunsets or sunrises or however, because again, you know, everyone shoots a sunrise, everyone shoots a sunset. And the problem is, I mean, Florida, it's it's not that hard to find them, especially here in the Gulf Coast, because you just basically you just open up the freaking front door and boom, there she is pretty much, you know. Yeah, some of you can go to the beach or whatever, yada, yada, but it's not that hard to find and uh, as long as you can get some, you know, decent landscape or stuff like that. But, you know, there's always that, you know, that, you know, but the Skyway always has that unique fixture to the whole thing. And getting that sun just from that right spot somehow just kind of works it all in. And I really love that. I really like that. And no matter, you know, since you can get only get there about twice a year, kind of, and, you know, and you get a few days out there to play with it. But every time you go out there about twice a year, you, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's cloudy. Sometimes, the, you know, when you go out there, if, if it's timed right, the tide is out or the tides way in, you just never know what you're going to get. It's a kind of a, you know, an interesting mixed bag sometimes. It's pretty cool. All right. But I like it. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Thanks for organizing. That. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, before, all right, I want every, I want someone to go kind of, uh, you know, you can do it in the chat or you, or you can uh, kind of shout out is like, I want you guys to tell me, uh, you know, if you got based on her, pre, I'll, I'll back it up a little bit, wait a minute, let me back it up a little bit. So based on her previous exposure, 
right here. Oops, I think I probably blew it away. So if you saw this was a 1250, 400 F8, 300 millimeters. So what do you think she shot this at? Anybody? I'd say somewhere around maybe 300 for the ISO. Uh, maybe for instance, because the water is no ripple or no flash in the water. I'd say she shot it at normal speed. Uh, maybe because the sun's, that's the moon. I would say maybe 400. No, I'd say about three, about three seconds. About three seconds? Maybe less because I don't see any, you know, I don't see no flat in the water. If it right. three seconds, that water would be almost flat. Right. It'd be more extended exposure, but I'd say maybe a maybe a two. And yeah. ISO, like I said, the ISO is going to be about maybe sixty four. Okay. Uh, shutter speed. It's going to be pretty slow. Yeah. Anybody else have any? Oops, chat. Okay, let me take a look chat. F8, ISO 401, 125th of a second. All right. Are you ready for the, are you ready for the final answer, guys? Sure, so go. She shot two exposures, right, Lisa? Right. Yeah. She shot one for the moon at 400, at 800 ISO at six point, and then around 600 millimeters from the moon. And then... Uh, she shot 394 field of view for the for the for the rest of everything, around 800 for ISO, 200 for the uh, for the bay, uh, according to the notes that she had in there. So so basically, this is kind of like a like a nice little composite for that. I was like when I when I I saw this before I saw the notes, and I was trying to figure out why. I was thinking, well, there must be some really cool compression that's going on their expansion. I'm like going, oh, she made the moon bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I don't think um, Lyndon's on the meeting tonight, but he yeah. one last, at the last meeting, he was saying, why don't you just, you know, zoom in on the, on the moon, you know, mm -hmm. when I had one of the shots. So I decided to try it. Yeah. And also, I couldn't get as far back as um, the, the shot that I did last time we had a meeting. I had like, you know, several miles away. And so yeah. the compression at 400 was, was everything was in the right, pretty much perspective. But yeah. this was much closer. Yeah. Well, so you, was, you don't get the compression. Yeah, exactly. Because when I was looking at this, I was trying to figure, well, before I saw your notes, I was looking at this. I was like, there's something odd about it. I couldn't quite place my finger on it. It wasn't until I saw this one when I realized that water is really soft, but the moon is a little bit sharper than the water, and I couldn't quite figure it out. And then I realized, wait, I think there's two different exposures because yeah. this is at the moon's at one thirteen, and then then the water's at ten seconds. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and I was like, going, and both of those things. I mean, I really love this one because I, I think this is a at least at least in my mind, this is a gorgeous composition. Because you got some really great, especially with the bridge detail in there, you got that nice little with the trucks and the cars, and you know with all the headlights and stuff like that, and the brake and the tail lights going by. You got the nice little moon glow going on and stuff like that. It works out really well. I I, I think you did a, at least for me in my mind. I think you did a pretty phenomenal job at oh thanks at putting thanks. this one together. I think it worked out really well, and uh, it's a really nice uh, a trick that's. You know, well, not trick, but you know what I mean. A nice, a nice effect that uh, that's not hard to do. It just, just is just an extra step that you got to do in the process to uh, to put it together. You know, the hardest yeah. thing to do is to put the moon and expose for the moon, and also expose for the uh, landscape, and still get a decent combination of the two together. Sometimes, right. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, as Glidden says, that's why the good Lord invented Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can blame this one on him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's not even here. He texted me. He says, right. I can't come tonight. I'm busy. No, <laughs> he's got, he had a, uh, a dinner engagement. He said he had to go to. Yeah, cool. 
Well, thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Does anybody have any other uh, uh, comments or anything like that tonight? I'd just like to know how you, where we send the photos in so we can get them evaluated or critiqued. Uh, you can send, well, it was supposed to go through Meetup, but unfortunately, Meetup for some reason has been acting weird lately, and I don't know why. But uh, you can send them to uh, uh, through uh, Dropbox or Google Drive to photodono at gmail.com. You have the instructions, Dono, in the uh, Meetup um, yeah. information. That's how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. All the instructions are basically there in, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the thingy there. Both the both the meetup yeah, and, in and the right. description for the meeting in the right, meetup. Yeah. I didn't realize I didn't see it in there. Yeah, that's right. It's like I said, it's no biggie. Like I said, not everybody does it. You know, if, if people do, they do. It's 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 there, there, there's no uh, uh, there's a uh, as my uh, teacher used to say, there's no dingy points for any of this stuff. <laughs> it's all for it's all for fun just to see and the idea is to basically try to be able to uh, share and get ideas for some of this stuff so when i look at lisa's stuff or, or other people's stuff like this or glidden's or anybody else's in here it's just it just to you know hopefully i can get, catch some ideas i always pick up something from everybody's stuff from this when i look at these things yeah all right i think uh yeah, and i did use photo pills too hmm? what i'm sorry I was just going to say I did use photo pills to get those locations. Oh, did you? In order to yeah. Set up those locations. All right. And Nick, are you around today? I am. All right. Hey, Nick. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Of course, I'm putting my camera up for virtual introduction. But thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, not a problem. I I can't remember. Did you say what you where you're from again? I'm well. I'm originally from Colorado, but I've been living in Florida, Orlando specifically, for about two years now. Yeah, I was wondering because that looked like that looked like the Epcot ball to me. I wasn't quite sure. Yep, you're exactly right. <laughs> well, that's cool. You enjoying Florida? I am. Yes, especially this time of year. That's been the biggest uh, selling point for me since moving here. Is just there's no no shoveling of snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's the nice part about that yeah honestly that's cool i think uh, i don't know if anybody else is, i haven't noticed anybody else is shooting fuji in here so i think you might be one of the few fuji guys in here so if anybody's also shooting fuji nick's your guy happy to happy to talk shop about it <laughs> all right so uh you know um this is with the xt4 and this is with their 35 prime right the one four mm -hmm. that's cool so uh this is I, I like the composition of this. This was that was this shot vertical or horizontal propped or how did you, what did you uh let me just shoot that was it? shot it landscape? So it was yeah, there there was just a big open black sky to the right of this, mm -hmm. and I was probably maybe 200 feet from the ball and just yeah. wanted to frame it with that almost verticality of where, where it ends and not get any of the stands or stuff. Yeah pushing the aperture as far open as I could so I didn't have to sacrifice any more noise on it. That's cool. Yeah, there's another guy in the group. Uh, his name is Dave Freyer. He likes to go to Disney. Uh, he calls it his Disney his Disney uh, uh, vacation. He goes, he goes uh -huh. there like every, almost every other month. It's and fun. It's, yeah. Yeah, if you post a bit, uh, if you ever, if you think about it, post it in the Lola group, he might comment or two or something like that. So, but I really like this. This is really nice. It's uh, it's a nice composition, very minimalist. I like that a lot. It works great, especially with the space that you created on there. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice, it's a really, really works well with all this stuff. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about just that open black space and just because sure. that was just a, a mask in Lightroom with just a linear mask. And I just dropped all of that down almost as right. low as it could go. So if you press J on that, it'll show up almost all blue. I just wanted to know just in your work, um, is that something you do or just absolute blacks or absolute whites too much? Or do you try to balance that too much? It's it's it all depends on what the overall effect is going to be. So sure. Since this is the, the uh, uh, without knowing anything else, the, I would say this is the intended effect. So it worked mm -hmm. out great. If the, the intended effect was to be something else, then, then of course it didn't work out. You know, right. The idea is what I'm seeing right now, this works out really well for it. 
if you were to say manipulate it further, put a star field or whatever, then it mm -hmm. starts taking on a different element or whatever. But obviously there were, I know you said there was blue sky or something like that, but it, it, that stuff was immaterial. The, the, right now, the, 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 so for me, the significance is the, um, is the, uh, the structure with all the black space. It kind of reminds me of like that old, um, uh, you know, those old sci-fi movies where they're, just coming up over the horizon type of thing you know yeah so, yeah so it's got that moonscape slash you know thing i i like it a lot i think that we're again like i said it's a nice minimalist piece i think it works out really well and uh and the thing you said you got a nice detail of some of the uh, structure in there and that again i think it's pretty awesome i like it a lot thank you all right let's go to the next one all right man fishies which one are these? Which one are these? Are these like sheep's heads or jacks or something like that? I, I wouldn't be the one to ask. I'm afraid I, I did not grow up as a fisherman. Well, yeah, I, I you know I grew up in Florida, but you know what they all look like to me? Goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> Only difference is the color of these ones. They almost look transparent when I saw them exactly. in the tank. Yeah. So you were shooting through. I'm mean, I'm assuming, of course, through a tank. Yeah, the the light was coming from above. Is that right? Yep, that's exactly right. So, what was the uh, what was the intent from all, from all this one particular one right here? The intent was really just to capture just a couple of fish. I mean, with that thirty five prime and the crop sensor, it, it mm -hmm. zooms in almost when you're right up against the glass. So, I just right. wanted to get just the profile of them as they were swimming by. You know, th this was the same night actually. This was just a little you know thing at um, right. Di at Disney still or at Epcot, uh, and still just cranking the uh, aperture open as wide as I could and really just just trying to capture just a couple of fish not trying to do much more than that or mm -hmm. even really put them in a larger scene yeah, one of the things that, at least for me when I'm trying to shoot like stuff like that it's always hard to find like a like a little story a little context because for me yeah. again and this is just me it's just spitballing here and, and I'm nine out of ten times I'm usually wrong about it anyway <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there's always trying to find some sort of story to put myself into you know sure. whenever i take whenever i used to take my son to um uh like moat marine down here and uh and stuff like that is he always wants to go look at the fishy so i always always want to put mm -hmm. like, an element attached to him for all that stuff but for me when i'm looking at fishes and stuff like that you know even though i've grown up my now my nephew on the other hand he'd probably look at that he's like you know i can go get those things <laughs> But as far as the exposure goes, I mean, this is, I think is great. You got some, you got the highlights aren't blown. You got some, you got some motion blur, but they're fish and that works out fine. You get this nice soft effect. It's got, it's again, you got it. You got a decent composition out of, out of the fish, you know, and that's always hard to do because they never listen. Bastard. No, they don't blink though. That's nice. They don't blink. Yeah. That's, that's the good thing about them. <laughs> now the hard thing is with this, with, with these guys too, is always waiting for them to do something interesting you, know, you never do any, you know, you always wait at the end. It's like you're there forever and everybody's like, what's he doing over there? He <laughs> left the tank for over an hour. Right. This was through, I mean, as you can imagine, it was through glass. Um, are there any filters out there that cut through that haze effect that you often get when shooting through glass windows? The All closest windows? thing you're going to get is a circular polarizer and that's really about it. And Okay. Yeah, you know, a polarizer is the only thing that's going to do all that, and it only works basically works best when you're and you're about ninety degree angles. That's the best way right. around it. Gotcha. Now I really love this one. I think this one was really cool, and I let's just love the 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 idea of the image, the plane, everybody looking up on it and stuff like that. It's like some sort of like some sort of story of somebody waiting for them there seeing somebody take off things like that it's just a you, know, you can put so much into this particular one you know get a nice little you know that nice little venus belt going on in the sky type of thing you know i think that worked out really well really well uh, i'm assuming you're, you're just using you're not adding any additional light you're just using the light that's in the particular area right yeah that's correct yeah so yeah, it worked out. I think that worked out pretty well. And that that did a pretty, pretty good job. I think 
let me hang on a sec. I think if I remember right, yeah, I did. I, I, I wanted to zoom up and check it out, some of the detail and stuff like that. And I think, like I said, it held up really, really well considering it because I know, because uh, I know it's crop sensor and stuff like that, but it just does a really great job in how it picked up all that detail in there. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been happy with Fuji since I started using them. I mean, there's there's your usual, you know, sharpen and dehaze stuff from Lightroom on that as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I was kind of lucky with the the shutter I was able to get. Yeah, well, especially well, you know, the thing is, you know, I mean, I know the jet's probably going whatever, you know, gazillion miles an hour and stuff <laughs> like that. But the thing is, you know, the the things when things are further away you can get away with slower shutter speeds unless they're really close up to you. You know, it's like when you're driving in a car, you know, you know, you'll see things real close to the window moving by really fast, except things the further away appear to be moving slower, you know, and that's that same effect. So mm -hmm. you can get by with a, a little bit sl a slower shutter speed for things further away and not notice any motion blur and stuff like that. But that 16 to 80 F4 is a phenomenal lens. It's uh it's a nice lens and then they did, did a great job you got that nice uh you also got that nice reflectivity there in the water down there that really picked up some of the highlights really nice but i thought you got a really uh lovely uh composition out of this particular one uh you know the and you know the pavilion is a nice little you know blocks that off pretty well again look i don't know if they're actually staring up at the plane but the idea is that they're staring up at the plane and stuff right. like that, you know i mean if there was any comment it was like the, the the guy over there not looking at the plane but you know you could always shop him out he's not important right <laughs> right this was one of my last ones of that night too i was there for most of the sunset and then like as i was leaving like that's me walking away from, from yeah. the, the, the pier and that's when i got that one yeah well, that was really cool, Nick. Well, I, I appreciate you. So uh, what else have uh, you been doing for, for low light? Anything else? Or are you just, uh, just, uh, just for fun? You've been practicing out and stuff like that? or Yeah, just a couple random projects I, I was hoping to jump into it on the next call was just I'm doing some stuff with uh, just long exposures on a TV, just letting the uh, images kind of cycle through and just seeing what comes through. Doing that when I uh, get up and kind of get my coffee in the morning every so often. You might like some of Larry's stuff here because that's why I stuck his after yeah. yours because he does. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're around, Larry, right? Are you around, Larry? I don't know if he, if he wandered off or not, but Larry no, does. I just wandered off. I just uh, I left it muted. Oh, okay. Larry, Larry is uh, very fond of something, and I'm also fond of it too. But it was intentional camera movement. And if I if I'm not wrong, he, he did some of that and uh, uh, some of his stuff. So uh, take a look what Larry did with some of that, and I think you might appreciate some of that stuff. And uh, that'd be something you might want to look into. Sounds All right, good, Nick, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for joining us. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, Mr. Larry. You know, did did I was I wrong? Was this some of your world famous? Uh, in, in, in intentional camera <laughs> movement uh, gumbo? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you know, it was obviously, uh, you know, everything was decorated for Christmas and all uh, the lights uh, on. Uh, I guess I can't point on here. <laughs> I could point here, but you can't see it. Uh, the, it was a, uh, we have a shed here with uh, bulbs all around it. And there's a, the white stuff, this vertical is a right. tree with white lights on it. And then, uh, as you can kind of make out, there's uh, uh, blow-ups uh, along the thing. And I just played with it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get it something that looked like. So I just fool around with it. And uh, that seems to work. And I left it wide open as far as 14 millimeters. This one ports it uh, 14 to uh, 150, so and equivalent. And, and I'm with the same Dono. I'm uh, Dono. I'm with uh, Michael Michael Forther. Right. Now, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the intentional camera movement, or it, it's it's not like a uh, you know uh, you know uh, some sort of you know uh, hashtag. What it was well, a hashtag, but it's not like movement. Movement. It's basically you're literally moving your lens or you're moving your camera in a deliberate direction while the exposure is happening. That's what they're talking about. 
So what's happening in, uh, is basically, Larry, I'm assuming this looks like a Zoom movement. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, this, this is a Zoom movement. Now, if there's a uh, intentional camera movement group that's on Facebook and they do some, you know, there's a lot of time where they'll uh, keep the fixed, uh, they're not zooming, they're just moving the camera vertically or in a circle right. or something of that nature. And uh, I didn't put any of that on now. I think one of the other times I had some stuff when we were at uh, uh, Corning, uh, Corning Gra Glass uh, Museum, I rotated the, the camera right. while I took the picture and, and that gives a whole different effect on, on things. So Zoom, you can get, this is, this is all Zoom yeah. stuff here. Yeah, because I was thinking when Nick was talking about photographing the TV for all the exposures, he, I was thinking he might want to try some of this stuff out, too, at the same time. Yeah, that's, you know, somebody else mentioned it to me about five or six, seven years ago. And yeah, I think I had a, a Nikon D60 at the time with a, uh, right. with a whatever the kit lenses were. And I, oh, I'll try that. And I did. And I said, like, oh, yeah. that's neat. <laughs> Yeah, it's just some cool stuff. I like it a lot. Uh, it, it's always fun playing around with that stuff. You never know what, you, well, it's not that you don't know what you get, but it's interesting to see the results. And uh, and the thing is, it's it, it, if you repeat it, it, you don't get necessarily the same result. You always get some slight variation of it. Or if you, even if you're trying to reproduce it over and over again, you know, so it's always fun to do. You know, it's like shooting the sunset every day. It's like it's always something slightly different. It's always fun to do. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. This is really cool. I love this, man. Especially because it looks like there's... I know I can see the snowman, a few things facing... But it looks like there's a face standing in the, in the middle of it all. You know, two eyes right here. At least that's what I'm seeing. There's like a beak right here or something, you know? So... Yeah, that's that's uh, let's see, what do we have there? We had a, a other lights uh, in the doorway, and that's what you're seeing the, the two white ones areas yeah. right in there. There was another set of lights there. Go cool beans, and I'm assuming that with the rockets, red glare, that was the was it the Falcon Heavy? Uh, I believe so. I don't remember which one it was, but I think it was. Uh, I'd have to look back at the. I didn't make a note of, of when that one was. I could tell you the date. Okay. Uh, that was on uh, January 15th. Okay. So if you notice what he's, what Larry's using, he's got a half second on there, 200 uh, ISO F22. But this is an early morning shoot, right? Was this what it was? Uh, no, I think it's, uh, according to the camera here, it says uh, 5, uh, five, five or 5. So it's uh, getting five towards that. Seven, almost 6 o'clock. Okay, so it's towards that. So either way, it's either, you know, dust slash dawn type of thing, whatever. So, yeah, so he's in that type of, a, you know, almost golden hour type of uh, shoot for this type of stuff. So you can see what the settings is. Now, of course, in Florida, you know, there's always the, you know, Canaveral's always sending some damn rocket up. I got a funny story about that, if you don't mind. I, uh, well, I went, if you guys don't, if you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys don't remember that when the shuttle used to fly around a lot more often, they, uh, they used to have a couple night uh, uh, landings, and uh, and sometimes they would land in Florida, right? Too, no, well, not just night landings, but they would sometimes land in Florida. And there were there was a couple night landings happening in Florida, and of course, when it would land in Florida, there'd be big sonic booms and things like that, right? So this is when uh, I was married, and it was like the first year, and and it's the first time she'd been in Florida, yeah, uh, during these these things, right? And uh, at three o'clock in the morning, the shuttle or whatever it was two o'clock in the morning, the shuttle was going to be landing. So it was going to be passing over us overhead in St. Pete, going towards uh, Cape Canaveral. And they'd be landing over there. It was like, again, one of the few times they'd be doing it. I'd heard it before, you know, no big deal, big sonic boom. I've heard them before, you know, kid growing up and, you know, you know, from the 60s, 70s and 80s, we, you know, it's not, no, no big hoo-ha, you know, when you know when they're coming, big sonic boom. 
So two o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, all of a sudden she wakes me up out of the sound sleep. She goes, oh my God, the house is shaking. <laughs> I was like going, what, what, what? She goes, the house is shaking. Oh, don't worry about it. It's just the shuttle. I said, I rolled over and I went back to bed. She goes, what do you mean it's the shuttle? Does this happen a lot? No, not that much. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I I ought to say on, on this shot here, this is a uh, live composite, which is a feature that you can use in. Oh, okay, uh, you're using live composite, okay. Right, you know, I mean, other than that, a uh, half second, you would not get the stream of of that. You could see that the uh, the water is a little bit softer and stuff like that. Right, okay. So, you know. So I use live uh, composite this way. Right? Pardon? You said you use live composite, right? Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember. I I'd have to look in uh, uh, the Olympic software in order to see how many shots that was. But, right. You know. Yeah, they make that stuff easy when you do that stuff. That's amazing. But still, it's a pretty good shot. I like that a lot. It worked out really, really well. It's really right. neat seeing the the rockets, uh, the trails, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a heavy because the uh, other ones that I've seen lately uh, just we see a little red dot going by. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, thank you very much for sharing these, Larry. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Oh, there was one more. I forgot about this one. That's right. The moon. Yep. I love the... Uh, the reflection of the moon right down there that looks really cool i love that that, I mean, yeah, that whole little thing you got going down there i thought that worked out really really well for you well kind of <laughs> not so much for me you don't you don't think so well uh it's a composite okay <laughs> So I was kind of glad you would get to that after you had talked to hers. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't try to play with I was, I don't remember all the ha what all happened, but I didn't get the exposure right, right at the time that I wanted it. So I was there the same day or that same night, but I was fooling around with things and something was going on and I, I, I missed it. So I looked at it and I said, oh, this one is pretty good and that one's good. And they were both there on the same day and everything. I just said, oh, that makes a better picture. Yep. <laughs> so I, I guess the composite must have worked pretty good. <laughs> no, I like it. I, I like it. I, Again, I really like it a lot. I think it works out uh, for, pretty well. You know, though my eye keeps wanting to, to just see the right half of it more often than not. But, you know, I like it. You know, I really like, again, I like that little, the way the moon's been cut up, or, you know, on there. I think that works out pretty well. Yeah, I, I didn't want to make the bid. Uh, uh, you know, I probably could have enlarged the, uh, the moon in, in uh, Photoshop and then played around with the uh, shot or the uh, reflection in order to make it match. But it was like, eh, I think it, it's better that way right and, and i originally wanted to do it as a composite but i didn't get things the right way that i wanted to do them but it, it still worked right. out to do it so all right well cool beans again thanks larry i really appreciate it. thank you very much for sharing these i again it's always a pleasure seeing your work it's always fun thank you mm -hmm. And I didn't see Greg on here tonight. Was Greg here tonight? And Greg, did he make it? He sent me a bunch of stuff, but I don't know if he made it or not. All right. Well, Greg sent me a pile of stuff. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead here to, for some of Greg's stuff. Greg's not here to talk about too much of his stuff. So I'm going to kind of hit the highlights and because uh, we're basically almost an hour and a half into here uh greg adams he's he's been in the, in the group for for a little for a bit now and um 
I really enjoy his work. And I think you might, some of you might enjoy his work. He's been out West and he, he's got some really, really, really interesting work. Uh, I really like this, uh, the sign he did here at the Texaco gas station uh, with the star field and everything else. You, and these are all shot with his Canon R5. Almost everything you'll see here is was shot with one lens. He shot wow. this with an EF 16 to 35 F2 version three uh lens uh the settings are all pretty much there uh i don't think he did anything other than maybe some uh, uh tracking he didn't say anything like that uh, but you know he's uh an amazing photographer and he, he's one uh just okay i'll take a look Graham, when i get a second there paul and uh it's an amazing uh I mean, he does some amazing, amazing work. This I thought was really cool with this nice right here. Um, I didn't see where he placed the light because I'm assuming he placed this light over here. I'm assuming it's a constant light. It's hard for me to tell. He didn't put that in his notes. Uh, you can see he's got his little footprints right there <laughs> in the shot. <clears throat> me, if it was me, I would try to go in there and shop him out. But, you know, Greg, you know, Greg pretty much leaves things as they are for the most part, if I remember correctly. But it's really, really cool, especially with the Milky Way in the background. And you got right there. Now, if you look at some of these these uh, settings that he's using on this stuff, if you notice right here, let me back up right here. You see right here, it's 20 seconds, F4, nothing too fancy, 3200. Doesn't take much to get where he's at for this type of stuff. He's using a fairly large sensor, and it's a full frame sensor if you're not familiar with that type of sensor. So we've talked about micro four thirds. Nick had a, a crop sensor. Both me and uh, Larry had micro four thirds. This is what they refer to as full frame. It's got about, four, uh, was it 40, 60? I forget the number. It's a lot of pixels on there. So he's got a lot of wiggle room to do some cropping and stuff. But he's shooting most of the stuff around 16 millimeters. So he's getting about 20 seconds. So he gets some really nice uh, exposure with the sky for 20 seconds because that's what you need for a lot for Milky Way. So if you're trying to get some of this Milky Way shots with some dark sky with 16 millimeter lenses, you know, that's what you want to do. If you got a crop sensor lens with 18 millimeters, uh, then you're going to want to do, you know, a little bit uh, uh, shorter type of shot. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, 16 millimeters, 18 millimeters. So you should be doing, uh, uh, sorry, my math is escaping me. I think it wants to be about uh, for 15 seconds, I think. Something around there. Photo pills will tell you. He shot this at 18 minutes, but yeah, it's it's not a rough, it's not an exact science. You get you got a little bit of wiggle room to go around with this. Now he called this one bank because this is an old bank that's out there. I thought this was awesome, so I took the liberty of basically kind of uh showing a detail of it and then i then i went back and then i wanted to zoom in just to kind of show you some of the detail he was able to record and recover from this now you got to remember he did some editing in here to do some recovery detail because the sky even though it's wonderful and looks great you gotta remember there's not great uh, it's this is not exactly how it always looks like that because there are some other lights going on probably or things going on in there that has to be kind of pulled back out or whatever. If you notice that there's a little bit of what they call motion blur at the star fields because it's against 20 seconds. He could have gone a little bit shorter, but no one's going to care about that type of stuff. At least I certainly don't. It's a wonderful, awesome shot. He got some amazing shots with some light painting and some long exposures with a strobe going off right over here. Uh, the reason why I know that's a strobe because it has to go off at the very last second. So I'm assuming that's a strobe uh, going off there right before, or I'm assuming right after the shutter, right before the shutter closes. Some really nice motion blur there. And you know, I'm assuming this is all in one shot because he likes to do that type of stuff. But again, he's not here, so I'm going to kind of move on right there. Again, some really cool shots. I'm going to assume 51 seconds into this shot takes a little bit of uh, planning and forethought behind this type of shot. Uh, I'm going to assume this is Laura doing all these pictures, <laughs> all these spheres. If you're not familiar with doing a light sphere, it's pretty straightforward. You stand in one place, take a light and spin it around, go to the next spot, 
turn the light off, go to the next spot, turn the light on, spin it around, turn the light off, spin it around. But you need time and you should practice this a few dozen times before you do it. You can see we did that. She did this like four or five times and going to different spots. You know, so it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Lots of fun to do. Yeah, 51 seconds on the clock right there. You probably have the uh, camera on a um, remote shutter. Uh, and then you had to hold the shutter down on the remote shutter to keep it open going on there. Now, he saw that he's called this one sculpture because there, there are some sculptures out west that he would photograph around there. And he did a little bit of a light painting around the whole entire thing. I'm assuming he's walking around doing all the light painting. You can't see him because, again, this is 30 seconds and he's just basically moving a light wand or light of some sort around the whole entire subject. Again, pretty cool stuff. If anybody's got any questions about how he did, I'll do my best to answer it for him. Again, some wonderful, wonderful stuff. Again, this is another one of his that, I, again, I really enjoyed. This is, again, he called this one Caddy. This is all shot with this cannon again of this Caddy out in the middle of nowhere. Pointed, and again, the camera's pointed towards north, so you get these star trails. If you ever wanted to shoot star trails, it's really pretty easy. Just point your camera to the north. When you point the camera to the north, and as long as you got the north star pointing there, if you didn't know how to find the north star, just look for the dipper, the big dipper, and just make sure you get that in there, and you'll be get pretty good on that. Uh, he just basically kept the camera open for 180 seconds. If you don't know how to do that, if you're not sure, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing it. We actually, PhotoPills talks about it. There's actually, we did a whole entire presentation about light trails not too long ago. I want to say it was back in September. I know it's in one of the, the YouTube things where we talk about that in great length. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, you can take a look at that. But if anybody wants to, I'll be glad to talk about it more again later on. Uh, but yeah, he did this all in one shot where he did some light painting and did some of that right there. Again, some really cool stuff. I really, really love some of Greg's work and fireworks. Oh my God, these, this was gorgeous. But this was a different lens. He shot this one with a 24 to 105. And again, some really cool stuff. This is a one and a half second shot. If you've never shot fireworks before, you really don't need a lot of time on your shutter speed. Again, using a remote trigger, just plug that into your camera and just wait for the fireworks you hear. And when the firework goes off, you just take the picture. You need a little bit of time on the shutter. So you either have to put a half second down or a couple seconds on there, or you got to hold that shutter button down and wait for it to go off. Once that shutter goes off, you get some great shots. And now this is probably towards the end of a finale of some sort. So that's why he's got a few bursts going on in there too. Now, again, some people, if you got like the Olympus system, uh, you can do what's called live composite where basically you can keep it open for as long as you want and it'll keep adding more and more bursts into it. Some people, what they'll do is they'll go in Photoshop and they'll basically do their own live composite and combine all of them into one picture if they want to as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, I can always show you about that type of stuff too um, in the next type of thing. It's kind of fun to do. Uh, I haven't shot too many fireworks lately. Um, as far as gone out there, it always seems to be like a bit... You always have to get there super early. And then when you get there super early, you're always like, you're, you're the first one there and you're the last one to leave. Because <laughs> it's always that extremely long line to get through all that stuff. I didn't see, I'm going to double check real quick. I didn't see any photos there on Meetup. Let me double check real quickly here. See if I, oh, I mean, Paul said he sent me something. So let me double check real quick here. Hang on one second. I sent it to photo Don. I just, when you had the SpaceX launch, I had one I shot that night. So I just sent it to your photo Don email. That's fine. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Nothing major, just. I wasn't going to send anything tonight. And then I did when you showed the SpaceX. Is that the one it was SpaceX? Yes, I, I wasn't ready. Just ran out in the backyard and grabbed it. 
those pesky space SpaceX. There it is. Okay. All right. Give me a tick here. Oh, Nancy's here. All right. All right. Yes. Premier. Premier. There we go. All right. I'm going to click here. Oh, there I am. Oh, no. We don't want to see me. All right. Let's go back to here. Here we go, Paul. All yeah. right. That's cool. I like that. So you, well, you, you just shot that win. What? Where? Nope. Did I lose you? Uh-oh. Did I lose everybody? I'm still, still here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. That looks pretty cool. I like that a lot. Oh, I, I can't unmute. Okay. No worries, Paul. Uh, I like that. That's that's really uh so Paul, if you can't unmute to uh, so what did you shoot it with? I didn't get a chance to pull any data up. If you want, just go ahead and type it in there. Uh yeah, that's really cool. It's like almost like a gun on a barrel. Shot it quickly in your backyard. Nice backyard. Oops. I don't know. Fucking up. <laughs> well, I like this, Paul. This looks pretty good. ISO 125, 6.3, 400 millimeters, 1400. Awesome stuff there, man. Pretty cool. All right. Cool beans. Awesome. Let me see if I see anybody else. Up there. I just sent one to your email. It should be there in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. All right. See what are we looking at? All right, hang on a second. Oh, it's Larry. No, oh, that's cool. Were you there? I didn't. Were you at the? Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's save attachment. No, next day. Next day. Yeah. Yeah. Was it better the next day? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I wrote something to someone else i said you know i've got the the bridge i've got the sun right under the bridge it's a, it's kind of a boring photo because it's just the bridge and the sun so then yeah. i went looking around i lowered the tripod all the way down and crawled around in the weeds and took a couple of others yeah and i like, I like that. those better than that so you know change your perspective folks <laughs> yeah that's basically what you got to do sometimes is change the yeah. perspective yeah. So. yeah let me pull yours up real quick and then we'll go into uh hopefully the other one will show up here pretty soon all right and then we'll get on to the other stuff and then we can wrap it all up okay oh that's the one i want there's larry larry Larry, there we go. All right, let's go back to Zoomy Zoom. 
share screen. And there we go. All right, so you should be able to see this one, hopefully. So this one, you were getting a little bit lower to the ground on this one, right? Yeah. 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 And, and there was this one. I like that one. That's my favorite. I like of the two you sent. That's my favorite. I love it when you get that little burst of light and all that bokeh in there and stuff like that. That's really cool. Or flare, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think it was all it was all F twenty two. So both of those those two were pretty yeah. much the same place, I guess. Yeah, and you get that little bit of, you get that little bit of foam going on in there. That's really nice, you know, right there. That little bit of foam. I like that a lot. That's cool, and I like the fact that the water is still a little bit more blue. That's cool too. I like that. Yeah, I, I was down probably. Uh, about three feet maybe uh or or less actually to the ground well, i took that picture all right i still haven't seen the other picture yet it's so there here hang on nope that's mom mom's texting me uh-oh what's mom gonna say no i can look at her later <clears throat> Who was sending me the other picture? I forgot. I'm sorry. I was. No, you were? Okay. Be a regular Gmail account. All right. Maybe went to junk mail. Let me just double check, make sure it's not in there, and then we'll go from there. Gmail, Gmail. How much Gmail do I get? Oh, <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> No, I'm not seeing it pop up yet. I'll keep an eye out for it here. I'm going to keep going to the next one, but I'll keep my, I got my email open, so I'm keeping an eye out for it. And I'll go from, but let me just keep going on to the next thing here and, and uh, I'll keep an ear out for it. Okay. All right. If not, we can always go to the, we can always move it on to the next night too. And the, the next time we do this, it's not a problem. All right, so let me just finish off on, on the stuff. Uh, let's go through mine real quick here, and then we'll wrap it up and get you guys out of here. So uh, Lisa mentioned something with I. This is something I had posted on uh, social media after I, I was leaving the park. So basically, I, I paid my dues at the park, and I was going, as I was leaving, I was up. Uh, oops, let's get out of here. Hang on one second. Play. There we go. And I was leaving the park, and this is basically what I was doing. However, what I did was I threw it through an app called Hipstamatic, and that's where it comes with this little special effect around there. And it threw this little bokeh balls and stuff on there. So it's just something I, I like doing because I think it's kind of cool and fun and things like that, you know, make things kind of you know, more fun and interesting, at least to me. So this is the original picture right here, but this is not the whole picture right here. The whole picture is this guy right here. So, you know, Mine's a little bit not quite on center as everybody else is, as Lisa was was right here, but I was a little bit more down the path a little bit. So whenever I'm whenever I shoot this picture, you know, and I shot a few, I'm still working on the video because I'm putting together a small video. I shot a few, I shot about over uh, a thousand pictures. So I was because I was trying to create a, I was going to try to create a, like a little 10 second or a time lapse video, but I never got a, haven't got a chance to finish that particular one yet. And I've had a few other projects that I had to, finish first before i can do that one yet but when i do i'll post that one and get that going there but this is like one of the ones right here came out okay i was pretty happy with that one but then the, i waited till I, I could see when the sun was coming trying to climb through the bridge as it was and i can really like that one more often 
And I, I kind of like it when you see that right there. The only thing that keeps bugging me, these birds are everywhere. Oh my God, if they would just get rid of the birds. One more, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding about the birds. Uh, now I'm shooting everything again with my micro four thirds system. Uh, this is a 150 millimeters, uh, very minimal crop on this particular one. So this is a, you know, if again, full frame, about 300 millimeters. This would be about, if I'm doing the math right, about 250 millimeters on, uh, on, on a crop sensor system. I'm shooting at eight thousandths of a second on most of the stuff. Uh, 7.1 is the f-stop. Everything's at 200. So these are all a uh, little bit on the dark side, but that's fine. I, I kind of prefer that if, for the most part. I did switch up the game a little bit. I went a little bit darker on this one. Uh, now I did lighten it up a bit in post. I Now I did crop into this one much more significantly because I really, like I was telling Lisa, I wanted to see what it was really going to look like really tight. So I did that, but this is what it looks like you know, from over there. Uh, somebody had asked me, I think it was, uh, I forget who it was, I think it was Rayvon, do, do you shoot these things horizontally? And I said, sure, why not? This is like one of the last pictures that I shot, and so I shot it horizontally. I, I will confess that I, I did not get the uh, starburst effect that I, uh, I, I wanted to get uh, out of there, so I did artificially generate some starburst in there, but uh, uh, but yeah, you know, and uh, but the um, one of the things that you, you know, sometimes you know that gets lost sometimes when you do these sunrises and sunset is that you forget that when you're processing these files that you forget sometimes there has to be a little bit of give and take with your with your warm and your cool colors. Not everything has to be warm all the way through. So for instance, on the um, on the water there, sometimes it, it's it's okay to be a little bit on the cool side if at all possible. Hang on one second. Oops, come here, you. So right here, you see right here, the water has a little bit of blue throughout the whole entire thing or a little bit cooler than up here. It gives a nice little vibration, a little bit of dichotomy between, or not dichotomy, um, uh, confrontation, or what's the word I want? Complementary color between the two of them. So it gives a, a you know, nice little vibrancy between the top and bottom. I'm literally cutting the picture in half, breaking all sorts of compositional things. But since this is so bright and this is so dark, I think it kind of evens out. I'm not sure, but I still, I'm, you know, I tried cropping it a little bit more tighter just to see what it would look like. And uh, I still didn't quite like it cropped too tight. I did crop a little bit off the side here, just a little bit. because I wanted the sun to be a little bit more in like a, uh, just off to the right a little bit, but that was about it. Not too terribly much. But again, this is stuff, the things that I look for when I'm looking at my own work. I'm trying to find something that's going to, you know, hopefully speak to me and give me that kind of, oh, wow moment. As Larry said, sometimes, you know, it is a bridge. It is the sun. There's like six to one, half a dozen of another of these things out there. And you're always trying to find one that kind of speaks to you and goes to you. I kind of like ones with more clouds in there, to be honest with you. I think those things really speak more to everyone out there, I think, overall. But everyone, you know, this is kind of subjective. There's no right one way or right wrong, one right way to do all these things. You know, it's like if you look at Ansel Adams, uh, you know, uh, dome photo, it's like, you know, there are probably people out there think that's a, you know, bunch of bull. And, you know, there's other people like me that think it's, well, that looks pretty cool. You know, and it's, you know, it's very subjective in how you look at some of the stuff. You know, so people look at, you know, uh, and Pablo Picasso and think, well, that's a bunch of bath. And then they might look at, you know, some other piece of work. And even though we might not like it, they think it's awesome, you know. You know, so I'm looking at all my work and stuff like that, and I'm constantly reevaluating. Does this speak to me? Does this do that? And, you know, the thing is, you know, you start looking at your work and you start evaluating and trying to figure out what it is that you would like to do, how you would like it to be. And you just start looking at it and you evaluate it. You can't really evaluate it how everyone's going to look at it. You have to evaluate it on what you would like, what you want to see, how you want to do it. 
you know, it's nice to be able to share your thoughts and your things with your peers and stuff like that. But at the end of the night, it doesn't really matter what they think. It all matters what you think. Unless they're paying your bills, it just it just doesn't matter. I get photographers that come in all the time and they're always asking me about this and that. And I says, well, look, you know, unless I'm paying your bills, you know, what I have to say doesn't really matter. <laughs> all right, so cool. All right. Cool. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. Thanks, Peter. All right. All right. Cool beans. All right. I'm going to stop the sharing here because sharing is caring, right? Well, listen, guys, I want to thank everyone who took the time to come out tonight. I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope everyone uh, got a little something out of it. Um, if you want to participate in it again next time, uh, next one, uh, as I, uh, uh, I don't think I mentioned it before at the beginning, but uh, I'll mention it when I, when I email everyone again, I, I try to do these on the odd months. So the next one, of course, will be in March. Uh, in March, I'm going to Car City. So I'm either going to do it before or after Car City in March. Um, if you've not been to Car City in March, it's a really cool place. Um, it's a place out in Georgia. It's about 30 minutes north of uh, Atlanta. Um, it's a it's a really unique place where you can go out and photograph. It's got acreage and acres of uh, of old cars just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not nowhere, but you know, out in the middle of you know, out in the middle, of basically in the open. They've been resting out there. It's like a it's like a it's called the photographer's capital because basically a lot of photographers like to go out there and photograph a bunch of rusty cars sitting out there. Google it. It's really, really cool. And uh, I'm going to be going out there in March. Uh, I'm going to uh, me and uh, I'm going to photograph a, a friend of mine out there. She wants me to go shoot some pictures of her out there. And uh, possibly another friend of mine is going out there. If I can get my car up and running, because before I drive it all the way up to Georgia, I want to make sure at least it gets me up and back. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Make sure you tell everyone, buy photo Donna. Have you checked out the uh, car lot over there in Bradenton area? Which one? The one over in Bradenton. There's a car lot over there with the 1930s, 1940s, 50s, and 60 cars. No, I have not. I've taken, gone over there. We did a bunch of photo shoots over there. I do a lot of model shoots. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of photo shoots over there. And there's also a horse farm out that way. We do. It's over towards Parish. And we do a lot of photo shoots there. Plus, we also go out to the train depot out there in Parish. Okay. Hey, I think I got your uh, your photo. It finally just popped up. Great. <laughs> it looks really cool. Uh, if you don't buy it, we'll just I'll I'll, I'll 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 bookmark this. We'll do this one uh, for for next uh, next time. If that, if that work for you? That works fine for me. Okay, great. I'll I'll, I'll save it for next time if that works for you. All right. All right. Thanks, Don. Maybe I'll send some more to you. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Okay. But uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. When that, let me know when that happens. So, or if you want some others to come out, let you can always post it in the low light group. That's fine with that on Facebook, and that'll be, and we can always let them know. Yeah. Well, we got some. I just did a photo shoot down at Tampa Theater, uh, December thirteenth, I think it was, yeah. for a three hour shoot down there with about fourteen models. And then cool. we, got, we got more going on too. Cool beans. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a model shoot not too long ago here at the studio for a class that we did down here. We got more coming up as well too, so that'll be fun. Well, I got one coming up on February seventh also as a tutoring shoot. Where yeah, a guy cool. got three models, one coming from Orlando and two from this area. Uh, I don't know if you know Thorough Hook, but he's going to be my male model on February seventh. Ah, cool. No, no, I don't know him off the top of my head, no. Yeah, uh, you ought to check him out. He's pretty cool. He used to work at Disney as a costume designer. Cool. All right. Now, now I look now now you look devilish. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. All right, cool beads. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, Don. Appreciate it. Hey Larry, Paul, everybody, Nick, everybody for taking the time to come out. I really appreciate it. It's uh it's always good to see new faces. Good to see some of the old familiar faces. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, as I said, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed their themselves. 
I love. I hope everyone got. I hope, la, 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 I'm trying again. I hope everybody uh, got uh, some good information for themselves. Uh, obviously, you know, you know, sometimes you know, it's with some of these things, it might be a mixed bag. Some of you might know a bunch of stuff, and I hope if you do, that you don't mind sharing. And for some of us who may not know enough, uh, like I said, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Like I said, it keeps me out of trouble. Mostly trouble, sometimes. Well, okay. I got in trouble last night, but I'm okay now. We won't mention details. <laughs> but other than that, thanks a lot. And uh, you guys have a great night. Stay safe out there. And uh, keep making pretty pictures out there, guys. All right. Have a great night. Somewhere around here is a button. Button, button. Who's got the button? The button around here. I can never find the button. Well, Pete, Pete, thank you so much, Pete. Thank you very much. I just saw that uh, came through. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say thanks.